What's going on, guys? And for those of you that don't know, I happen to be quite the wrestling fan out there. I'm 34 years old, and I've been watching wrestling for 33 and a half years. And dare I expose myself for the nerd that I am when it comes to the professional wrestling industry? Well, there you go. Now, there's a lot of big news going around. You can see from the title of this video that the biggest news seems to be sort of outside the purview of that of the professional wrestling business and into the actual entertainment and the stock market. You know, and it's a weekend where things should be celebrated around the WWE. They got a record-breaking Royal Rumble coming up today, which is Saturday when I'm filming this. They got The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, joining the TKO board of directors following the merger with the UFC. And they just signed a $5 billion, with a B, dollar deal with Netflix for the longest running weekly episodic television show in history, The Monday Night Raw. Everyone kind of knows what that is. To start streaming live on Netflix starting January 1st, 2025. And also taking on the entire WWE library, which... As of the last uh, monetary sale that they had when they were bought by Endeavor is worth $9 billion. A lot of big news, but it's being overshadowed. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button to help out this video and help out this channel in general. And leave your comment in the comment section below regarding what it is that we're talking about right now. And that is Vince McMahon, the... Famous CEO billionaire of WWE is in the news yet again, and that is because he is being accused officially through court documents of s abuse and s trafficking of a former employee, Janelle Grant. And he has, as of this, as of last night, Friday night. He has officially resigned from all roles within the WWE and TKO group holdings. Uh, in result of this, uh, we saw Slim Jim pull uh, their sponsorship. They were the main sponsor of the Royal Rumble coming up this weekend. Uh, big sponsor for WWE, and they pulled their sponsorship due to these allegations and these court documents coming up. Uh, we also saw him release a statement, uh, I believe through himself, actually, which is where he obviously denies all the wrongdoings uh claims that it was a mixture of the stretching of the truth and just made up lies and he looks forward to clearing his name uh janelle grant also released a statement saying that she was happy with the result of him resigning and that she hopes that more people will speak out and that there's no more having to hide your the employees fears of working at wwe's office apparently that's a thing now let's be very very clear i read the 67 page court documents that had certain exhibits in it including text messages and in the context of what janelle grant has presented that it was an abusive relationship and that she lived in fear the entire time boy does this look horrific and terrible and oh my god bury the man underneath the prison it's bad in that context i've seen a lot of comments though from online of people jumping to conclusions here and i figured after that last one that happened with a famous person making accusations of somebody that we would have learned our lesson to maybe let the court fill it out because it's kind of like yeah they were telling the truth but they were telling the truth in a way that wasn't fair to the context in which it was happening in real time now let's start with the ndas people have been using the ndas that vince mcmahon has signed in the past that have been resulted in money as proof of his guilt and i understand why people would think that but that's generally because they don't have an understanding of what it's like for people that are in the public eye, that have lots of money, that are billionaires, that are big time celebrities. It was just recently, I believe it was in the summer, that platinum recording artist Pink talked about how she makes every single person she's ever gone on a date with sign an NDA, uh, even if it was just as simple as a one-time coffee date. And it's because she wants to just not have her public life out there. She doesn't want the media to be able to manipulate certain things. She doesn't want the people she goes out with to be able to manipulate things either and use their relationship to further themselves in one way, shape, or form, whether it be through fame, whether it be through fortune, or a combination of both. And that's really a normal practice amongst a lot of people that have status 
in the world that have lots of money. And now you have to look at it in the context of she is making men do that. Now imagine through the court of public opinion, what it looks like for a man in that scenario, especially a man with billions of dollars. I am sure, you know, that Vince McMahon throughout his sham of a marriage, which they say has been broken up for almost two decades at this point, and was only on paper in order to protect Linda McMahon's political aspirations, you know, because there's just a thing about politicians not wanting to look like they're divorced for some reason. I don't understand that, but it is a thing apparently in politics where it doesn't like, it doesn't project well for voters for some reason. It makes them look like they're uncommittal or something, something like that. But it was done really just to protect Linda McMahon and her aspirations in the political sphere. And we saw her end up on Donald Trump's um, cabinet for education or something. Or was it small businesses? Something like that. Uh, I think she had done some education stuff and then did small business things. You know, very qualified for it. You know, she was apparently the real uh, part of the brain behind the business side of WWE's expansion from local Northeast wrestling promotion to global conglomerate worth $9 billion now. So all credit to her. But it was really done to protect her uh, political aspirations. So he had been in previous relationships, obviously, with other women. And there were multiple NDAs in which money was exchanged. It wouldn't surprise me if he had gotten legal advice through these breakups of relationship to be like, make them sign an NDA and throw them a couple bucks just to get them to actually sign it. Because the person has to actually consent to sign the NDA. And if they don't, then you're kind of at their mercy at that point. So to maybe motivate them a little bit, he wipes his ass with billions, with millions of dollars. So a couple million here, a couple million there isn't really that big, big of a deal to him. It's kind of like if you drop a quarter in the street from, you know, me and you, you're like, ah, bummer. But, you know, your life isn't over. So basically, I'd be equally surprised or not surprised if that was the context of those NDAs or if the context of the NDAs was that he's a complete piece of garbage. Now, the next one is the content in which has been revealed so far which is the text messages that are then compounded with Janelle Grant's account of what was happening surrounding these text messages. Because when you look at the text messages, she's not disagreeing with anything he's saying, but it is some very uh, sexually aggressive uh, content in these text messages that in the context that she's presenting that it was abusive, you're looking at it and I was reading and going like, oh my God, God, it's horrific. But then it got me thinking, I had to take a step back a bit. And then you have to look at these messages were presented with a different context. Now, I can't show them. I'm going to link the 67-page court documents in the description here so you can click on those and read it yourself. I can't really show them on here because they are pretty explicit. In the context of what is called a BDSM relationship, and particularly the dominant and the submissive, they can reach some pretty extremes that you and I can't really fathom unless you sort of look into it. It becomes something where if the headline instead was Vince McMahon lives like Christian Grey in real life with leaked text messages with kinky new young girlfriend, then you read those text messages and you wouldn't think he was a monster. You would just think that he was nasty. The ability to change the context so easily by just removing the one little thing, because there is... When you look at it, there is a thin line in those relationships between kinky consensual and brutally abusive. And all it takes is the woman to say that in her head, she was actually just afraid. And that changes everything. And that's why this is not a criminal case. It's a civil case because it is very hard for her to prove that based upon the text messages, because the ones that she did show that she was had a response in was her being very agreeable to everything that he was saying, to her being into it. Now, is it possible that she is telling the truth, that she was just afraid the whole time, and she feared for her job, she feared all that stuff? Absolutely. Absolutely. I almost would lean 51% so far that that's the case. But there's 49% left over for me. She was in a relationship with a very rich and powerful man, that was a very kinky relationship. Uh, her mental health uh, history that seems to exist would point me in the direction that she is likely into that kind of stuff. I know that sounds very judgmental, but you kind of got to be in a certain state of mind 
you can't be just a normal person with a normal life and a normal upbringing and normal, almost non-existent traumas. You can't be that way and then still be into this kind of stuff. You just can't. And there is a talking about her having mental health issues in the lead up to her even meeting him. You know, she's in a relationship with him. And then the wife on paper finds out and says, this can't be happening because Vince did have apparently a really big mouth and was bragging around the office that he was banging this really hot chick who was sort of into three ways and all this really ridiculous kinky stuff and sort of got off on it. And again, in the text messages that she released that she had responses in, she was very agreeable to all these things. There was no sign in those messages outside of her saying what was going on in her head, which is hard to prove in court. It's all, you know, you know, so then, so then here comes, and she was lavished in gifts on a regular basis. There was like, I think there was almost like a million dollars worth of gifts over the three years, two or three years that they were together in this relationship. So the wife finds out, they go on, and the relationship is over, signs an NDA, in which it was agreed upon that she would also receive $3 million for the relationship ending, and as motivation for her signing the NDA at the behest of Linda McMahon, who of course didn't want this to get out. They wanted her to be in the public that her marriage was still a thing, even though it had been not a thing because again, the ridiculousness of political aspirations in the political sphere when it comes to divorce and marriage and fidelity and infidelity and all that crap. But then the key here is, is that after the first million dollar payment, there was a leak of the relationship through an anonymous email in which then Vince McMahon's legal team said this NDA now is null and void because you leaked it because the email said it was a friend of hers that was basically exposing the whole thing and that's the initial thing that happened in 2022 when Vince McMahon was removed from power in WWE prior to the sale to endeavor to create TKO group holdings so the money stops her name kind of gets out there is it out of the realm of reason that she wouldn't be mad about that? That she was expecting to get two more million dollars for her trouble and now she's not only lost a relationship with somebody that she might have cared about, that she might have actually had feelings for and now doesn't even get the money for it and has mental health issues. So why wouldn't she just throw everything in the fire and burn it all down? Again, I'm not saying she's lying. I lean like I just said, I lean slightly more towards believing that she's telling the truth than she's telling a lie. Because there's, there's just way too many details in there and I can understand somebody feeling helpless and scared and afraid and he's so powerful and I get it. I get it. And But there could also be a little mixture of both. I could believe that maybe for the first six months to a year that they were really happy and everything was great and then it sort of started to turn the other way and she didn't know how to get out and she didn't know how to say no and all this kind of crap and then she kind of embellishes a little bit that maybe she said no a little bit more than she actually did and maybe she added a little details to the story to make them sound more horrific to maybe make people feel like they understand a little bit more so it sounds as abusive as she felt it was. I think all those things are real possibilities Ah, uh, it's just, it, I just, Amber Heard kind of ruined this for everyone, didn't she? By telling just enough of the truth so then people believed the lies and then everyone felt really, really dumb after watching that court case play out. And now she's sort of like a running joke. The guy lost everything. She lost nothing, really faced no repercussions for it professionally, financially, anything. He kind of suffered the whole thing. So it's kind of it's tough you just kind of want to i don't want to jump all over i understand wrestling fans because they're kind of autistic will just jump all over vince mcmahon because they don't know how to separate characters from real life that's why i'm kind of it's almost embarrassing sometimes to be a wrestling fan to be honest with you uh, because of that lack of ability that so many of them have, especially online, to be able to separate characters from real life and they sort of treat everything like it's a giant wrestling storyline which it gets annoying. And so this is more, you know, I understand most people maybe watching this are wrestling fans because of the algorithms. But if you're not, I hope you have some sort of understanding here and can kind of separate it and realize that. So this is, this could be very ugly, very dirty, very quickly. Uh, but, you know, Vince McMahon out of WWE due to these allegations and the court documents. And 
see it play out in court, man. Got to see it play out in court. Don't really know. Uh, ish, ish. Uh, she said that he took a crap on her head. Vince, you took a crap on her head and then you banged her with the crap still on her head and in her and in her hair. You, Vince, come on. This is what I mean. This is what I mean by like, you know, you think that it's just choking and slapping and some hair pulling when it comes to these BDSM relationships because that Fifty Shades of Grey movie was so tame. But I promise you, I promise you, people go way nastier than that. And I just, I just uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. What do you think of this story? And, you know, if you want to see the court documents again, I'll link it in the bio of this video. And I will see you guys with more next time. That's less gross than this and less serious also hopefully